My practice has changed so much over the years and it continues to. Um, the way that I practice is I look at it uh, just really in the rhythm of the day. So if my day I know is going to be really young, meaning I'm teaching a lot, I'm putting out a lot of energy, um, there's a lot of uh, responsibility and expectation, I want my practice to be a little bit more yin, more restorative, um, inversions, meditation, prayer. If I know my day is going to be a little bit more yin, then I amp it up and I try to find that balance. There are so many poses that I love and loathe at different times in my life. And I would imagine that right now, the poses that are most meaningful in my world would be restorative poses, so Supapada Kanasana. It, these are very challenging poses for me because I'm, my nature is much more young and, and dynamic and it, it's more comfortable for me to go into spaces where I'm confronting my edges. If I could teach yoga to anyone, I would want to teach probably President Obama. I think that would be an incredible opportunity. I've had opportunities to work with pretty high level politicians and I always feel like when I go into that environment um, that if I can do anything to help to support them in their own health and wellness and sustainability that might alter the way that they make a decision, I can't imagine a greater uh, service to do in the world than to work with people who are in, in, in leadership position. Yoga and activism fits together because yoga is ultimately about oneness and it's about unity and the collective consciousness and to not engage means that I keep myself separate from the human experience. So whether I'm engaging in my family, that's a form of activism. Whether I'm engaging in my community, that's a form of activism. It's action. Um, it's getting involved and so to me there is no differ differentiation. The activity of unionizing the global family seems completely in alignment with the practice of yoga as the way that I've been taught and that's my commitment.